Hey, hey, hey. Uh, what's up, everybody? Uh, thank you for the, for joining us for another episode of 813 uh, Sports Network. Uh, today we got a we got a great guest, um, somebody I've been knowing for for such a long time, a dear friend of mine. Uh, he'll be a normal a normal contributor here on the 813 Sports Network, um, talking about, uh, uh, of course, Biggs High School also, um, and also recruiting coming out of the Midwest, um, Oklahoma and Texas especially. Um, so uh, none other than let me introduce my guy, uh, Dominique Struther. What's going on, Dominique? Hey, how you guys doing? Uh, like uh, my guy said, uh, DeBerry, we've been going, knowing each other for 20, 20 plus years. Came into Liberty University, same year. He tackles, uh, man, just learned a lot from each other, pushed each other and just, man, and, and was like family. Right. Still like family. So. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. So um, just tell us a little bit about, your, about yourself, uh, your journey, um, and tell us how you uh, how you got into, um, you're not because you're not originally from Oklahoma. Tell us how you got to yeah. Oklahoma, and then tell us tell us the good work that you're doing out there, and um, we'll go from there. Okay, yeah. So uh, graduated in 2004 from Liberty University. Um, I met my wife that that uh, that spring. Um, she was still had a year left at Oklahoma State. Uh, well, she had a semester left at Oklahoma State, and uh, I ended up uh, moving out there with, or uh, moving out here with her. And uh, you remember Jarrell Watts, right? That used oh, to absolutely. Play yeah, yeah. Jarrell Watts, his father, J.C. Watts, uh, the former uh, the legendary J.C. Watts. Yeah, legendary yeah. J.C. Watts. Um, so yeah, so. Uh, uh basically got into uh by that friendship uh that God set up back in college got into the oil and gas industry uh in 06 oh yeah no six and then got a that was an entry level position got a uh a, a really good position as a petroleum landman in 07 and ran with it um uh, worked hard worked my way up the ladder um traveled uh done a lot of oil and gas history title all across the United States. Uh, it done well for me uh, to where I was able to actually drill my own oil and gas well out here. Uh, my wife's family is in the oil and gas industry and her grandfather was a geologist. So he, he provided us with that type of knowledge that we were able to successfully drill well, praise the Lord. Um, and uh, man, been doing that and then this uh, cannabis thing just came to Oklahoma uh, and we bought this uh, location um, three years ago, right when uh, it came and it had a nice size building where we was able to actually get our license and um, be legal um, medical marijuana providers for the state of Oklahoma. So, and I have, my company's name is Family Tree Inc. So we actually are doing that right now too. Uh, so man, God killing, been killing it out there. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, considering man that uh, brother grew up with his grandmother, you know, no pops, you know, uh, just my mom, my brothers, and my aunt, man. And you know, Madison County, you've been there. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It, it ain't much to it. So, no. and, and audience but, guys, if you excuse the noise, if you hear all kind of if your dogs barking or. A uh, weed whackers. I had to come outside. My kids, put my kids down for a nap. And if you got kids, you know how that is. So I had to, oh, yeah. I had to oh, relocate yeah. outside. So I apologize if you hear the background noise. Um, we got some good information on you this show. Um, so you're out in Oklahoma now, um, and your son DJ um, mm -hmm. um, is a uh, tell. Well, tell us about DJ, and then tell us, you know. Uh, yeah, well, I, well, 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 I'll get into like, so when I moved, I was traveled a lot for oil and gas. And when I moved back here, when we drilled our well, we moved to a town, a county called Omogi. And uh, at that time, my son was only in the uh, third grade. So, well, at, well, we ended up reclassing. So basically, he was a second grader. Right. Uh, so uh, 
when I came out here and you know, you're, you, you know how it is. I was kind of like, I don't want nobody coaching my son in little league and teaching mm-hmm. them all kind of bad habits. Right. So, uh, you know, being a former ball player. So I got involved in, they was like, well, where, where you want to play your son? And, and, you know, as a former Juco coach, everybody like Jinx, Union, Bigsby, go to those places. Right. So right. I'm telling my wife, like, yo, I want to live in Jinx. Cause that's where the ball, and I'm thinking futuristic. Um, Cause at this time, my son is just a second grader, and my other ones are like they're they're infants. Right. So, uh, <laughs> but my wife's like she wants to live in Old Mogi because she's a, a Creek citizen. She's a uh, Muscogee Creek citizen, and uh, at that time, she was getting a position there, and uh, her sister worked there, and um, and I think her brother was going to school there at the time, or he had just graduated because they have a uh, university that's affiliated with the. Uh, Oklahoma State University. So uh, we ended up moving to Old Mogi, long story short. Uh, and they was like, well, you got multiple schools in Old Mogi County. You can go to Old Mogi, Henrietta, uh, Biggs. And I heard it is it's a pretty diverse, uh, some of the you know ethnic groups and percentages in some of these count- towns out here in Oklahoma. Uh, and it's so, I don't know the exact numbers, but it's pretty diverse. So, because that's one of the things we were we were looking for, diversity, being from Virginia. You know, you being from the 757 Virginia Beach, I being from, you know, central Northern Virginia. So we end up picking bigs, man, because I had heard some good things about it. Um, and I got the coach and uh, the uh, second and the, uh, the third and fourth grade, but my son played up because he was good size. So, man, so when I get there and I'm coaching these kids and, I'm, and I start as, you know, as an assistant with these guys and they tell me they got some talent and I'm hearing them and I'm like, you know, where, you know, I'm listening, you know, I'm like, hey, you got to show me because I've right. seen, I know what real talent looks like. Right. Show me. right. So I get there and I see this little young kid um, named Ryan Grayson and Red Martell. Uh, and they're running, they're sprinting, and they're neck and neck with each other. They're cousins. And oh, they're you know, cousins. Whole, they're, yeah, oh, yeah, they're cousins. They're oh, cousins. wow. They're, yeah, they're, his Ryan's uh, father is Red's mother's first cousin. They're first cousins. Their their mom their their mom is their mothers are sisters. So yeah, it's close connected, man. That's one of the beautiful things about this town, but. Man, so we get into going into playing in the games, man. And uh, my son is playing. You know, my son is used to playing. He played AAU at this time. He's still young, but he had played AAU in Virginia. So he was used to playing, like, Virginia Beach teams, Richmond teams, Lynchburg teams, right. uh, things of that nature. He had seen some some, some talent. So uh, we get here, and it's like, okay, we got some talent. And we start playing these teams in Little League, and we're beating them. <laughs> and we're not just beating them and not even crossing the line of scrimmage, right? Like these oh, wow. teams are ending up with negative 70 to 85 yards at the end of the game. Oh, wow. And we're starting to look at each other and like, are these kids that good? Or are these teams that bad? They're bad, right. So, okay. So we, so I'm with these kids. They're developing as time goes. And my son at the time period, and to speak of DJ, I thought he was going to be a D tackle like me and you, right? Right. right. Until one practice, we was like, "What the heck?" Because at the time we was playing him at tight end, because we didn't know what he was kind of be. Because DJ was kind of pudgy, and he was short at the time, and he was still kind of a little stiff. So we was like, we had him at D tackle, we had him at tight end, and then one day we had him on scout team linebacker, right? And uh, all of a sudden, this I was looking, and I said, "The boy came down here and struck somebody." <laughs> and I and I looked at uh, uh, Doug, who was one of the other coaches, and I was like, "Did you see what I saw?" He was like, "Yeah." And 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 this was was he was going against our first team up, um, and then he did it again, and then we was like, "I looked at him. I said, he might be a linebacker." 
that following that year, he didn't play linebacker. He ended up playing tight end. But the following year, he ended up being our middle linebacker. And after that, man, we just look. He's a natural middle linebacker because it's, he, he is just like ever since he was that age, it's like he, he just flows with the ball. Wherever the ball goes, he's not thinking. His, his body is just moving with it. Right. A lot of times you get kids at that age where – this what I like to say they're stuck in the mud on that second level because they're trying to process what's going on and they're also they're trying to move and they're trying to get off a block and they're trying to make a tackle you, and by the time they figure it out the running back is already gone past them you got uh, you got DJ reading his keys yet yeah he's been reading his keys for a long time you know I've been right. having uh you know, the good thing about having college buddies, I've been having like Kendrick and talk to him different right. that over the time period. Right. But uh, just to get back to like, uh, not to like get off DJ, because I'm going to be real. I'm I, and, and like DJ is not the main star on this show. He's a star, but he's not the main star on this, this show. Yeah. Um, so like, that's yeah. why I want everybody to know when I give critiques, I try to be as honest and real. Right. Uh, it's possible. Now, my right. son is, is definitely is going to probably be a three or four star uh, football player, but he's not the, the the cream of the crop as far as between Red and Ryan. Wait, you, hold players. on. So three or four star, bro. I mean, that's not light. I mean, most of your draft picks are three or uh, three and four stars. I think he has a chance to be at least at minimum three star just okay. because he's getting his, his, his reads are uh, his reads are off are are, are uh, above normal. Like right. you don't see kids reading like that at this right. age, or scraping downhill, or playing as physical at the point of attack where you're getting off blocks. So for our audience, has to- so for our audience, when you say DJ, uh, go ahead and tag his last name so our audience can can uh, do their own research. So give last names too. So when we talk, oh yeah, so. Um, um, DJ Straw, the class of 2025. Uh, he is an upcoming ninth grader at Biggs. Um, and uh, he plays middle linebacker. Uh, and he also plays tight end. Uh, he's already, tight end. Already, already being evaluated from um, from your major. Yeah, he's uh, being evaluated. He got uh, uh, 24 7 sports, is, uh, has been looking at him as far as like they wrote a couple things on him. Um, Six star, uh, six star sports, uh, you know, rivals know who he is, prep zone. Um, uh, so he got so in pretty much all the, all the major, uh, all the major outlets know who right. he is. He should be definitely a, a, a ranked ball player when it all okay. So, done. so we talk about DJ, all right. So, um, so you get, of course, DJ's on, on the team, all right. So let's, let's jump into to his teammates and uh, some of the older guys um, that you have a- that you have access to. Um, well, well just- so I'll, I'll start uh, with some of the kids that we've, uh, uh, this town is, man, what I, what I say about this town has been, it's like a, it's been blessed. God has blessed this town because I've never seen such a small town. Cause there's only 4,500 people here. Wow. Have so much talent in one town. Right. Uh, we got a kid that's the number 14 overall rated running back in the country in CJ Brown. Um, and uh, he is uh, committed to Oklahoma State University uh, 2022. Um, we got a what position kid, uh, running back, running, running back. back. Okay. You said that. Okay. Yeah. Running back. Um, he plays corner too, but uh, he, he, he is a top notch running back he uh this guy he got he has wheels quick uh built i mean just chiseled um is he one cut and go or is he gonna he gonna do you in uh he's a more of a one cut and go he got he got some shift with him though he got a little shift with him um he's he doesn't have that type of like that dre barn shift right. uh but he is he'll fit that type of zone read system because right. all you got to hit that one cut and you don't right Right. Or, 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 but also, he is a great uh, receiver out of the backfield, which which will also help. He'll be a mismatch. He'll be a mismatch on a linebacker and a safety because he's too fast. Right. Right. So, so you probably got to put a nickel on him. 
because they'll line he'll he'll play he'll play outside too he'll they'll do a lot of different things with him they'll do a lot of different things with him here this year in high school but also when he gets to Oklahoma State because he's he's a great athlete right right, uh, right. so uh, then we got a kid that just left Kendall Daniels who is a freak of nature man uh, he was the number one prospect um, he was the number one prospect in the whole state of Oklahoma. Uh, this year, uh, six five. He actually just measured six six, six six, two hundred pound free safety. Yeah, range, range, uh, hips, athletic, jump. I mean, that's one of the things left. you worry about a guy at, at six five and six six. Your hips, um, because a, a lot of you know a lot of my experience, you get a guy at. I've seen I've seen a few do it. Get a guy that tall, they're not as 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 loose in the hips as you like them. So you got a guy six five six six, got hips. Ooh, you you uh yeah. you got a blessing. See, we play, the they play a lot of zero coverage here, so we don't play a lot of zone. We don't play a lot of zone. We got so, we got too many athletes. We don't they don't play a lot of zone here. We play a lot of we play a lot of one. Uh, we play a oh, lot wow, of zero. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. we play a lot of zero one. Play a little two. And little three, but mostly a lot of zero, a lot of zero one. So, uh, uh, but we got the athletes to do it though, and we got the D line to do it. We can play, you, we can play cover two all day because we got D line to do it. Play Tampa right. two, because uh, let me get on these other kids because I'm about, I'm about to smile because we're about to get to the D line. Um, <laughs> we got a kid named uh, Malik Bogert that just came in six six, two thirty. And he is currently offered by SMU, SMU, Oak, uh, no, I'm sorry, SMU, K-State, Kansas, uh, Arkansas State, North Texas, uh, Indiana. Uh, and just to name a few. The ones listen, that listen let me say something about Indiana real quick. So if you if you get an offer from Indiana, I want, I want everybody to know that uh, – Indiana is definitely a school to be to be reckoned with um, at, I, the, at the next. I agree. I'm not going to say next nothing because I'm not sure how far they went um, this year. Um, but the the head coach, I forget what his name is. Um, who's the head coach of Indiana? Uh, I was blessed blessed to uh, to see him because uh, he was at the University of South Florida in 2015, I want to say. Uh, mm-hmm. Hope. Uh, coach, is Coach Hope? I think so. Yeah, Coach Hope, um, great guy. The kids love him. Um, he's 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 your uh, he's your players' coach, um, but he's he believes in discipline. Um, he, he believes in the small things and the little things that count. Um, so I'm a fan. I'm definitely a fan. Just you know, from from watching him when he was here uh, in Tampa, at USF, um, and hearing the uh, hearing the kids talk about him, uh, I'm definitely a fan. So. He's definitely got that that program heading that right that right direction. So, um, you get an offer from Indiana. Just wanted you to know that that, that program is definitely headed. Um, yeah, yeah, ninety degrees. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They, they're, they're, I mean to cut you off, but go ahead. Um, no, you good. I'm, no, no. I'm like I'm like Indiana. Defense. They play defense. Right. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And and, and, and you're for defensive end that is that type of size and length, long, and the kid can play too. Yeah, uh, he would have way more offers coming off an of ACL injury, but oh, wow. uh, looked really good in team camp. Uh, dominated the line of scrimmage, um, so I, I think he's going to have a big year. Um, uh, we got another kid uh, by that is a that is a junior, a rising junior by the name of Chance Jordan. Does not currently have any offers. Mm-hmm. Um, Dominated the line of scrimmage as a 10th grader. Yeah, I guess he uh, froze up real quick. Um, we'll wait till he comes back. But one of the one of the uh, intriguing things about um, talking and, um, you know, getting Dominique on the show is um, the guy has so much access um, to uh, – to some of the nation's top talent right there at, at Biggs High School, but also um, Dominic has his hand. Um, he has his hand. He has his pulse on recruiting. 
um, in that area just because of his relationships uh, with some of those guys uh, at, at Biggs High School. So, um, you know, he, he knows, uh, he, he definitely knows, um, you know, who the, uh, who the most talented kids are uh, in that area. So to, uh, to get an inside perspective of what kind of kids are going to come from that area, who's being recruited, uh, who to watch, um, you know, who's up and coming um, in that area. Um, in Oklahoma, not just Oklahoma, but Texas too. I know um, Dominic, uh, he has some relationships with, uh, with parents and also um, some of those uh, recruiting uh, outlets that he named, uh, he has some, some, some relationships with those guys too. So um, like I said, he has his pulse um, on who the upcoming guys are um, in that area that includes Oklahoma and Texas. So um, working on getting them back. I'm pretty sure his internet kind of froze and let's see. Let's send him a quick text. Because I know my guy, he live out there in the country. So I don't know how good his internet is. I'm pretty sure it's pretty sound. Let's check and see. Um, like you mentioned, um, another reason why um, it's intriguing um, to have Dominic as a uh, as a uh, contributor to the uh, 813 Sports Network um, is, like you said, I, I coached out there. I coached at Independence Community College um, in Independence, Kansas, um, which is which is a junior college. Um, so I had a uh, coach out there for, for two years. Um, um, so it's it's right right a uh, right over the border of Oklahoma, um, probably about forty five minutes from Tulsa, um, and then with Tulsa you get a chance to see uh, uh, Jinx and get a chance to look at um, um, Union um, in that area. Never really saw Bigs play, but uh, um, I, I heard I heard of Bigs. Um, uh, and I know, I want to say I have seen Biggs because um, they played, uh, Biggs played uh, Union uh, at a game that I was, uh, I was recruiting a kid at Union, um, big defensive lineman. He was about 6'5", probably about uh, 285 at the time. We, I don't think we did, did much with him, but um, I am familiar with some of those teams out there, and I do know how those, uh, how those guys out there recruit. Um, so, um, it's, it's, it's a real treat. Uh, so like I said, I'm from Virginia Beach, Virginia. So um, I, uh, I definitely uh, have access and, and know what that, uh, what that recruiting pool is all about. But living out there in the Midwest, it's, it's kind of a different, it's different out there. <laughs> I, know, I know some of y'all might not like this, but they don't play, they play no defense in the Big 12 at all. <laughs> um, so and that's why you get those, uh, you know, 50 to well, 45. What's up? Yeah. No, you go ahead. No, I was just saying that you're telling the truth. What I think they're trying to change their recruiting techniques um, and start to recruit more dominant. Like I was on that one recruit. I, I'm sorry. I cut out my phone overheated. Oh, I so was good. outside. And my phone said temperature too hot and it shut down. So I had to come back inside and try to cool it real fast and then get back on with you. So good. Yeah. So I was talking about the one kid, Chance Jordan, uh, junior, don't currently have any offers at the current moment, dominated as a sophomore, is a rising uh, junior. So uh, he will probably end up being a solid three star just because the only knock on him is, is height. They're going to say six foot, you know, six foot, six one, probably more so six foot. Uh, but he's 292 and he runs a high four eight. Um, so that's why I say when you turn on the tape with him, hands are violent, fast, got it, and he has a motor, has a motor. Mm. Um, the tape uh, don't lie. Uh, as, can't be as, lie. Yeah. So as being a shorter guy myself um, and having a, a level of success, and you know, you, me and you probably the same height. Um, 
if you're gonna be six foot, all right, you gotta be dominant at the line of scrimmage. All right, you gotta mm-hmm. be able to play both pass and the run equally as good. And mm-hmm. and, the, and I say the most critical thing when you're shorter, when you're shorter D lineman, your motor has to be nonstop. <laughs> you yep. gotta play with you gotta play with your hair on fire. So I don't think a lot of well. A majority of schools don't really mind, especially inside at the three or the nose. I don't think they know. I don't think they really mind a guy being that short, depending on who you talk to. But like I said, if he has a motor, right, that that really is going to uh, that's really going to um, be the upside for a kid that's that's probably about six foot six one. So well, I look yeah. for him to have a major year. I mean, this kid, he was he was only. His 10th grade uh, film, he was playing more like 5'10", 260. Right. Uh, so he actually grew. Um, that's why I was like, you know, some of these recruiting, you know, agencies or recruiting, uh, they got to let kids develop, man. You know, some kids. That's true. I believe, first, yeah. The Spurs hit a little faster than some other kids. But, you know, this kid is 16, about to turn 17. You might never have another inch or two with him. You never yeah. know. Uh, but uh, as far as... Uh, um, dominating oh he will dominate the line of scrimmage i mean especially having malik on the outside uh he, he will get a lot of single teams on uh you know playing in the three tech so uh i look for him to have a big year uh this year uh and then we have another kid that's on the other side of the ball on the offensive line named um caden stanton and he is six five offensive like like offense line his name <laughs> yeah caden stanton man six five uh, very good feet. Uh, he's on the verge of probably getting Iowa State or uh, Oklahoma State. What are those two? Nebraska. Uh, they got him listed as the number three or four overall office lineman in the state. Uh, I think with him, all he has to do is be a little bit more physical and all the offers will come uh, because as far as foot talent, as uh, far as hand talent, as far as, uh, he, you know, he's probably had the best foot hand talent. Uh, yeah. Just a nice kid. Just got to get a little bit more nasty dog in him. Finish the blocks because he makes a lot of good blocks. But he'll he lay the kid down. Just go ahead and destroy him. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just just for recruiting purposes. He'll, he'll cool. learn. He'll learn. Yeah, he'll it's learn. just for recruiting purposes. Right. Uh, and uh, they 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 like all that stuff where you fall on them and and drug them and all that. You know. You know. Oh yeah, it, it's yeah, that's dominating your opponent. Yeah, it's, it's, it's imposing sexy. imposing your will on, an, on another human being. Yeah, you, know, you can't. And teach he that. did that as a tenth grade. I mean, he did it as a tenth grader. So it's like now it's just like he's 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 going to be the player that blows up during the year. Uh, he'll get a lot of offers during the year going into the spring um, because he, his feet his footwork is phenomenal. He's a basketball player too. What position? And guard he, or guard or tackle? Yeah, that's the thing. He can play. He he plays tackle in high school, but he can play both in in college because oh, wow. he's he's a uh, six five, um, and he got great feet and he got long arms. But he also right. is pretty compact too. Right. Uh, and uh, oh, but his so, arms, huh? Um, has arms. He got long. long he got arms. long arms. Yeah. So. All right. Yeah, he's gonna be so, he's gonna be a good one. Um, but uh, man, I say the the best two for last, man. Um, oh yeah, we haven't talked about those guys. <laughs> uh, we got some other kids on the team. Uh, we got uh, just to throw them out there real fast. It's a kid named uh, Jerry Oldham. Uh, it's a kid named Kyron Grayson that is going into his senior year. He is actually the younger Grayson kid that I'm about to talk about. Older brother, uh, very athletic. Uh, unfortunately, he got hurt doing track, uh, so he's trying to bounce back from that. If he bounces back, he'll definitely pick up a. Uh, uh as uh fcs offer right uh, super talented uh somebody that uh coach clark should consider um athletic ability off the charts uh four or five kid uh just super i mean their father they said that their father was a phenom so they i right. mean genetically and their mother uh brother is uh uh actually the assistant um assistant head coach at uh oklahoma uh basketball um uh, uh Pooh Bear Williams. Um, oh, so he's got pedigree. Yeah, yeah. So it's pedi- I mean, yeah, the DNA is right. So right. <laughs> but uh the the kid Kyron, the name is Kyron Grayson, 2022 six one corner. Right. Long arms, jump through the roof, 
And these uh, are all these are all good solid kids, like as far these as these are all uh, oh yeah, no character issues at all. Right. Uh, that's one thing I have to say. These kids don't have no character issues. Uh, we got another kid named Darion uh, who will play some college ball. Uh, will he play like an Alabama somewhere? Uh, if he if he if he grows, um, that's the only knock on him. He's only like five eight, but I mean, as far as uh, middle line as a linebacker, middle linebacker uh solid and he's a right. leader he's right. a leader of men um so uh that's another one to pay attention to that's going into the 11th grade we got a lot of kids that are going into the 11th grade so uh but so let's I, be I'm clear kind of talking right. about some of the kids that are already on a lot of the uh big agencies radars but we got another kid that i was going to tell you about a uh, receiver named uh, jerry Oldham. uh ran a 22 second on um, 200 meters real fast um so he's going to have a breakout year. I, I already know he's getting attention already from like Air Force um, and a couple other schools. So, uh, right. Uh, which is, this is impressive, man, because we're a 2A school. So let's be clear. <laughs> let me, let's, let's be clear here. These are just kids just at Biggs High School, correct? Yeah, this is Biggs. <laughs> this is just our school. Right, right, yeah. right. So, uh, yeah, uh, and then like I said, so to jump into the last two that are uh, that are, are phenoms, man, uh, the kid uh, Red Martell um, uh, is going into the tenth grade, uh, and he is five ten and a half, no shoes, one ninety eight, running back, uh, power, vision, speed. Just elite um, has a chance to be, uh, I think, a Heisman Trophy candidate one day. Mm. Um, that good. Um, got hands. Reminds me of reminds me of Thomas Jones and a little bit of C.J. Spiller. Oh wow! Yeah. Uh, great vision um, and runs hard uh, and wants it. And excellent in the class, 3.9 GPA. Oh, wow. Yeah, so he is currently being looked at by Wisconsin, OSU, uh, um, Cal, uh, who else? Um, K-State. I mean, I mean, once you know how it goes. Once you get that first one, it's it, it'll be. Oh yeah, the flag is open. I've I've seen that. Uh, <laughs> but they got him rated the number one running back in Oklahoma, and I don't know where they got him nationally, but they got him number right. one overall in the state because right. he just going into the tenth grade. So, um, but uh, the one, the last one, Ryan Grayson. Um, this kid has a chance to be uh, Deion Sanders special. Uh, wow yeah he has a chance because he has a chance to be like Charles Woodson Deion Sanders special to where he can play on both sides of the ball and make an impact mm. um, kind of have that air regime where if he touch it on defense it's going back to the house if he touch it his kickoff and pump return it's going to the house we play team camp um they let him play down with JV, but JV out here is second, third string uh, varsity. Um, and uh, he can't, he's, this is him coming off eighth grade, didn't even participate in his practice, 10 touchdowns in two days. Oh. I mean, kid is special, man. And, 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 and I don't even know how many in, in Little League when we was coming up, the kid probably had 160 touchdowns. I don't know. <laughs> and, and and he would have had more if we would allow him to have more. Right. Yeah. Same thing right. with Red. I mean, I mean, it was it it was, it would be touchdown after touchdown. Um, just give it to him. It's guaranteed. It's a touchdown because he because nobody can run with him. He's, right. He's, uh, they clocked him at four seven and coming into the ninth grade. Um, uh, and he's dunking with two hands already. Um. I mean, this kid is probably going to be the number one player in, in the class of 25 and top 25 in, a whole, in overall in the country. This just said, uh, is athlete or a specialist or? Uh, it's athlete because, athlete. I mean, 
Uh, him and Red will make him when uh, him, Red, and CJ Brown is one of the best backfields in the United States of America. Got to be because CJ right. Brown special, Red special, and this kid is special. Uh, so, but they're going to use. But the thing is, all these kids also can split out wide and play receiver, mm. uh, and all of them also can line up and run it back and 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 take it to the house. Right. Um, but right. the difference with uh, Ryan Grayson is Ryan Grayson can throw the ball seven yards too. Jeez. So he you could, could, he could, he could, he could, he could throw the ball 70 yards. He could throw a baseball 80 miles an hour. Uh, so, so just, just for Mitch Matt, uh, a mis- mismatch, um, concerns, like you get all three of them on the same field at one time. And, oof, that's, that's scary. Oh, it's scary, man. Nobody in the state got these. Oh, nobody in the every, I tell you, it's few teams in the state that have one of them, but nobody got three of them. Right. Nobody got three of them. Right. Right. So that's Biggs. Um, and that's Biggs. And so just, we, just we talk don't about even have a McDonald's in our town. Oh wow! <laughs> a Sonic <laughs> got a Sonic. We ain't even got a Sonic. We got we got uh Schaefer's drive through. Shout out to Schaefer's drive through. I'm giving you free <laughs> promo right here. <laughs> so that's just Biggs. Um, and I, like I told the audience when you were trying to get back in. You also have your post, uh, your finger on the post for some other kids um, in, in, in the uh, um, in the uh, Oklahoma, Texas area. That's, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. We got yeah. a kid that's uh, that that's out of Dell City named David Stone, 6'5", 255, DND tackle. He might Ooh, be end up being the number one prospect in the whole country. Uh, um, he's already got 10 offers going into the 10th grade. Um, he's got uh, Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, Texas. Uh, I want to say uh, K State or somebody like that. He got ten of them. I can't name and let's be, let's, be let's, let's also be clear too. Um, these are guys you have personal relationships with, correct? Well, I I, I have relationships as far as like with him on Twitter, as far as like reposting and stuff like that. I don't I don't know him personally. Like, okay. I know the okay. kids from Vegas. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Who else? Uh, who else can you speak on? Who else is uh, upcoming? Uh, well, they got a kid out of Texas named DeCorian Moore. Um, that's a receiver. Uh, he's twenty twenty five, and he's already got uh, three offers: the uh, University of Pittsburgh and Tennessee. He's going to be the next thing at receiver. Um, uh, uh, they got a kid at Booker T. Uh, named Isaac. Uh, Out Tulsa. Yes, Out Tulsa. Yep. They actually got a, quite a few kids at Booker T. Uh, oh, I can't oh yeah. I've yeah, yeah, been through those halls. Yeah, been through those halls plenty of times. Quite a few at uh, Dell City too. <laughs> Dell City got quite a few other kids that I can't name off the top of my head, but they also got D one offers. The thing about Oklahoma that I think people get confused is uh, there's a lot of pockets of talent here. It's just yeah, it isn't as many as let's say you know Texas, Texas, uh, Virginia, right. different that because the population is different. But if you but know they, where uh, to go, so yeah, but Oklahoma go, is so so spread out, man. It's so uh, spread out, and there's so many schools which right. dilutes the the talent. The talent, like you'll have a county that has ten schools in it, and the county don't have more than thirty thousand population of 40,000 population so you're going to dilute the talent to where you play some of these teams right that would be decent right if they would just converge schools but you know they don't and and <laughs> they're getting their butts beat right. pretty bad right but right hey that's 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 like uh it's like virginia beach to be honest with you so virginia beach has i think 12 high schools now mm-hmm. um so back in the back in the day when there was only like uh, maybe uh, eight, you would have these dominant teams like where I'm with the high school I went to Green Run. Um, so so when they uh, when they split up Green Run, Green Run. So uh, that was Salem, that's Lansdown, um, uh, where else? Um, right down the street. I'm talking about like within the five five. So yeah, so Salem, Lansdown, um, maybe. Maybe kill them a little bit, but not so much. Um, so there was all those kids just going to one high school. Um, but the talent at my high school back in those days was it was so thick, it was ridiculous. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I can de- definitely identify to um, uh, a state like Oklahoma 
mainly Tulsa. How many schools does Tulsa have? Yeah, that's the thing. Tulsa has so many schools. You got right. Edison, you right. got uh, Union, you got, I mean, and then you got like uh, uh, McLean. Um, it's quite a Booker T. Um, uh, let's see. It's quite a few, man. Uh, and yeah. then you got the the, the, the boroughs like Bigsby, Broken Arrow. Right, Broken Arrow. Uh, yeah. Sand Springs, you know, Broken Arrow, um, which they've, they've come on. the. Uh, they got a kid that just committed, I um, think, uh, name of Marvin Horn. He just committed to um, Texas Tech. Um, they got an, and Owasso has a defensive tackle named Chris Owasso. I forgot about yeah, Owasso. Owasso. <laughs> yeah, Owasso. They got a kid that uh, there's a defensive tackle named Chris McKellen. Uh, I don't know him personally, uh, other than Twitter, but uh, I know some folks that know him, and um, and uh, he has quite a few. He has just about everybody offered him: Ohio State, USC, uh, you know, Tennessee. You know, you name it, he got it. And uh, uh, so it'd be interesting to see where he goes. Oklahoma off them as well, and Oklahoma State. So uh, it'd be it'd be interesting to see where he goes as well. Um, Oklahoma just got a big um, uh, jump because the two brothers from uh, Santa Fe, uh, Edmund Santa Fe, just went to uh, just committed to Oklahoma State. And the one brother, I think his name was Tevlin um, Shelton, I believe. Tevlin, I might be pronouncing his last name wrong. But uh, he was one of the top receivers in the country, and he was supposed to go to OU. And that was a big thing. He jumped and went to uh, oh, they flipped OSU. Him, huh? Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, but OSU had offered his brother as well, so he gets to play with his brother. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. You got to use that strategy to land the one. I oh, absolutely. You'd be a fool not to. You'd be a fool yeah. not to. Um, and, and unless you hate your brother, I can't see why you would want to be uh, away from your brother anyway. So having an opportunity to play with your brother, that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a chance of a lifetime. Yeah. Especially so, in college. Yeah, yeah. So, man, I think one of the major things I see the difference of, as being a person that grew up in Virginia and a uh, uh, person that's out here now, it's just, I mean, it's a population difference, but I think Virginia, as far as talent, uh, I mean, there's so much talent down there where y'all was from, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's hard to compete with that with uh, other states. Um, but I mean, but we, Oklahoma um, has some talent in these, the Tulsa pocket, Oklahoma City pockets, and then they have some small town talent down there. I, I got a guy named uh, Sean Cooper, who runs C4 Sports, man. He's doing a really good job down there. Um, he's actually got quite a few kids. It's a kid that I showed you the other day uh, that I can talk about. Uh, I don't want to crush his name. I think it's, his name is By Joe. Um, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, I actually do have a decent, I know him a little bit through Sean, um, but this kid is 6'5", uh, 230 maybe. Um, basketball baller too um and he just started playing football last year and he and he balled out uh he had he currently has three offers i believe i know arkansas is one of them and i believe texas a&m just offered him mm. um so he's they got him rated uh uh six i think in this class so four or five in oh Oklahoma. wow well wow. um oh well he has a chance to be uh uh a uh, really big prospect uh, once it all comes together. I mean, uh, can't teach 6'5", you can't teach the athletic ability. I mean, this kid can dunk it any way you want it. I um, mean, he's just going into the 11th grade, so. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so Sean is doing good things down there with small town, giving small town kids, because, you know, sometimes small towns get overlooked. Um, we've been fortunate down here. Uh, with Biggs, we've been going to the States for like the last four or five years. And then with the Kendall Dan. <laughs> My man, having phone issues again. <laughs> he read that it's from Biggs. So, I mean, a small town, but uh, a lot of, you'll find actually a lot of your good players in Oakland. Oklahoma and some of these small towns, if you know where to look at. Um, but in the going to uh, to to segue to another recruit that is big time that has got 
I want to say 30 offers already. And he's going to the 11th grade. There's a kid named Luke Hask, tight end out of Bixby. Um, this kid has a chance to be like uh, Travis Kelsey could. Oh, wow. <laughs> he's a mismatch. Right. He's a problem. He's right. already got, he's got Alabama, OU, Texas, Ohio State, Notre Dame, USC, you know, I want to say Georgia. Uh, I mean, I mean, at Virginia Tech, Liberty. Um, actually, I yeah, Liberty. Uh, Coach Kyle uh, gave me a call about him. Um, Kyle uh, Armin, the Armin, uh -huh. I think, down there, right. yeah, down in Liberty. Uh, and I was telling him, I was like, man, y'all need to offer this kid. This kid is like, this kid is the real deal. Like, right. Right. Yeah, he he running he running crisp routes and he's just going into the eleventh grade. Right. Hands six four, two twenty five, two thirty. Uh, workout freak. Um, just just somebody to want it and he can block. So right. uh, he'll, he'll be a, a lot of tight ends that can block. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. So he can catch and he dirty. He he, he 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 nasty. He got grit. He a dog. He a dog. And they got another little shift back up there named uh brennan presley uh uh he ain't i used matter of fact you I, you watched him last year we talked about him remember the uh booker t and the bixby game was on tv last year man i don't remember <laughs> Sorry, okay well this little this back man he about five seven nothing but a little barnsey shifty right uh, uh he's going to oklahoma state um his brother actually just went to Oklahoma State. So like receiver. old state picking up a lot of picking up a lot of steam. Man, they are man. I'm telling you, Oklahoma State is diving into Oklahoma, man. Because you know what's the craziest thing, and, and a lot of people don't like to admit this, but if you look back at OU when OU was killing, a lot of the talent was from Oklahoma, man. A lot of that talent was mm. from Oklahoma, and a lot of the, uh, I mean, you think about Gerald McCoy. I mean, he was from Oklahoma City. Uh, you think about uh, Royals. Uh, you think about um, uh, the uh, what's that? Uh, Teddy Lehman, um, the Stellman brothers. I mean, you go all the way back to uh, J.C. Watts. I mean, back in those days. I mean, a lot of the the great talent from Oklahoma has came from Oklahoma, and I felt like OU has kind of gotten away from that, where they go to a lot of out of state places instead of picking up a lot of this talent that's home. Right. It's, yeah, it's a lot of talent that's home. Um, and especially coming up in this next uh, three years, I, um, it's a lot of talent coming out of Oklahoma. Yeah, yeah. As long as they fix that defense, uh, old state. Uh, as long as they can fix. But that's fix what that. at Oklahoma State they're trying to do, man. They had a they had a pretty solid year last year on defense. Um, yeah. And that's the thing uh, that uh, kids got to pay attention to uh, is I one of the things that I looked at is the NFL draft this year. Right. Uh, 65 kids out of SEC, 48 out of the ACC, or it was 50, 55 out of the ACC or something like that, 54 from the Big Ten, and like 48 from the uh, 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 Pac-12 Pac -12 or something like that. I might be off a little bit with the numbers, but uh, I want to say Big 12 only had like 20-something. Hmm, that, wow. That's a big drop off. Um, it is. And then if you take away OU and you take away Oklahoma State, Texas, um, then you almost knocking down 60% of the 22 players that were drafted, which 40% of the rest of the conference would make up that 22 players. You know what I'm saying? So I think some of the, I think some of the things that uh, the NFL is looking at are just how people are running up and down the field like 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 the like magic johnson and the lakers in the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> i mean just from a developmental standpoint i mean uh that all that stuff matters i mean um yeah i don't want to get into the specifics uh, and schemes and stuff on defense um, but all, all that stuff matters. If you find it harder to cover, if you find it harder to cover uh, in the in, hard to cover in the Big Twelve, uh, just imagine when you got uh, freaking um, uh, Fitzgerald on the outside and yeah, Kelsey at tight end. All those guys, all those high-powered 
offensive weapons. If you can't cover in the Big Twelve, yeah, um, yeah, we, yeah, what makes you think Tyree you're gonna? Hill. Right, yeah. All those, all those uh, difference makers of offense. If you find it hard to cover in the Big Twelve in college, uh, like you really going, you going, you going to hate life uh, when you when you get to the uh, when you get to the NFL ranks. So all that stuff matters. It really does. Yeah. Yeah, it yeah. does. Yeah. Well, yeah, man. Um, I think that's 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 a good jump start. Um, so if somebody wants to contact you, uh, uh, I would say just give out your email address. Don't give, don't give out your phone number. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can how my, can somebody get in contact with you? Or you can get hit me at uh, at Coach Dom at Coach Dominique seventy seven on uh, Twitter at Coach Dominique seventy seven on Twitter, and uh, I try to promote kids. I don't, you know. I don't charge anything. I do this just for the passion. Um, right. Because I love the game. Um, right. So, you know, anything I can do to help kids uh, live their uh, their uh, dream. Uh, right. I think some of the things these kids um, got to be real with themselves. Um, no, uh, it's, not, it's not, not necessarily the kids. It, it's, some of, well, some of these parents got to be real. Parents and in the community, too. Yeah. And... Uh, that's one of the things that is that I think is plaguing recruiting right now is like everybody's D one, right? And so who's D two? You know, and everybody can't be D one or FCS. Uh, let me tell you something, everybody... bro. Let me let me tell you something. So when I coached um, at Missouri Southern State, which is Division two, um, which is the MIAA, um, there was no shortage of talent. <laughs> I'm gonna just let you know that now. Yeah. So you know. The uh, uh, the power power five and all of that all that stuff man like if you good you solid I'm I'm telling you they gonna you find solid, you. what what they, um, they they will find you so um, that's what I was telling my nephew I was like you ain't got to go to Alabama I was like you don't three, the three best don't. receivers that ever played a game played in the FCS yeah you don't <laughs> you don't have to go to a power five um, you know now you go to a, a winning a winning uh, FCS school will help um, mm -hmm. in a winning uh, Division two school. Division two school uh, that's going to help. So if you you know if you're at the bottom of the barrel um, at that level, it's not really hard for you to get discovered. But uh, if you're a solid player and you go to FCS and Division two um, and you contribute to uh, your team's success, they're going to find you. Uh, yeah. They're going to find you. Yeah, and that's the thing. And, and well, with this uh, transfer uh, portal, man, I feel like these kids. Go Division One, the four star. They go Division One, and that's oh, one yeah. of the things I go to these camps, and I be looking at these kids, and they like they're four star, and I'm like, he just dropped three straight passes. Uh, <laughs> he just got jammed. He can't even get off. He can't get no separation. Um, but I be like, okay, whatever. He's three, four star, and he's in the transfer portal one year after he's there. But at the thing is, it's like nobody wants to work anymore. Oh, like, yeah. When yeah. I was at Liberty, and you know, I was at Liberty. I, w I worked my way from the practice squad as a uh, all the way up to right. where I was uh, on the depth chart. Right. And it was like, nobody gave that to me. I worked for it. I didn't cry about it. I didn't have a vendetta against you. I didn't have a vendetta against Biggins or anybody else that was in front of me. You guys are all my dudes. You know what I'm saying? So right. it was, but, but nobody wants to work for anything anymore. It's like, everybody wants it given to them or like, even if I well, don't they play do. My let's, let's, be, let's be clear. They do give it to them. <laughs> they do. Give let's it. be yeah, clear. They do give it to them. Um, and and that's, that's the problem. That's a whole other conversation that we can we get. We can go yeah, down yeah. Way, we need to dive time. in that conversation. That's we can. <laughs> we can because it's it's a conversation that needs to be had. Um, yeah, we need, we definitely need to discuss that. So, but yeah, man, I just wanted to uh, you know bring you on, um, introduce you to the to the platform. Let everybody know that you'll be a major contributor, like I said, coming from the uh, Midwest out uh, there in Tulsa, uh, not just Tulsa, but Oklahoma um, and the Texas uh, kids and, and providing some um, you know, your feedback on what you see and who you connected to. You, you, know, you, you have you're building your network with college coaches, too. Now, um, yeah. so we talked about. Uh, so a lot, a lot of college coaches, uh, a lot of college coach, coaches are really dependent on your uh, your feedback as far as recruiting, too. Correct. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, man. If if you want to get in touch with uh, Mr. Dominique Struther, hit him up on Twitter. 
Um, you know, let him know what you're working with now. He don't work miracles now. So if you Yeah, I don't work you miracles, fight. but if you can't can play, I'm gonna tell you you can play. And if you stink, right. I'm gonna let you know he stinks. Right. Uh, right. Sometimes some of these kids need to know where they at so they actually get where they're going. Um, but sometimes these kids be getting lied to, man. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. And yeah. they get bad information. Bad information. Uh so um so I know they're I know the uh, I forget what they call it. I, I coach in NCAA, so so right now their uh, NCAA is uh, what, what do you call dead it? It's a dead period, right? Dead period, right? Well, now. they just they well they just lifted that, and so you can't because you know the whole COVID situation kind of threw everything in chaos to where it was dead period, basically going on where nobody was allowed on campus. Everything had to be Zoom call. Everything had to be text. So well, yeah, but was yes, I know we are, we out of that in terms of where uh, we are okay. in the calendar so, year. So is it July go back into a dead period? Say it again. Does July start dead period again? Well, um, so well, I know in Georgia, um, I think the week of the July, the week of July fourth, is a dead period for high schools. Period. I don't know how that affects. Oh, well, it was we had dead period last week for okay. high schools out here. So we okay. they actually back. Today. Okay, we're cool. Back, we're back today, out there getting it because my son. Where you guys um, headed next? Um, uh, we got, uh, we got. Well, as far as camps or anything, like right, that, right, right, right. Um, I think uh, we might go back to Oklahoma State. Um, at the end of the month. Um, right. And then, uh, as far as that, just getting ready for the season. This is just a freshman season, so I think you'll get the. I think a lot of those younger. Oh, I, 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 I don't want to miss this kid because this kid. I want to mention. I want to shout this kid out. We got a we got a uh, kid named Logan Thomas. I mean, uh, Logan Thomas, Logan um, Hicks, uh, safe. Just going into just a, but he's the kid can play, right? Um, and he got nothing but dog in him. I mean, he's straight rock wall of pit bull. Oh wow! Uh, we gotta tame him down. He he'll 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 bite somebody out there. You know he 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 a dog and um, smart. Dad's a coach. Uh, definitely will get some. Definitely will play college football. Uh, Division one, Division two. He will definitely play college football. I don't want to say where he'll play, but he'll definitely play somewhere. He'll definitely have some stars behind his name because the boy. These kids got a chance to do something special around here. Um, right. And, uh, and we'll see, man. It, it depends. I think we got a good core, got a good group. Kids are not knuckleheads uh, as far as, like, staying in trouble or anything like that. Never had any issues as far as behavior on any of these kids. Uh, DJ is a honor student, and, and, and a lot of these kids are, uh, you know, academic. You know, they, their academics are fine to where, right. you know, there's not an issue. Um, but that will be a not will not be an issue when it comes time uh, for them to make that decision, or when schools come in and take that look at that transcript, and they won't say, "Ooh, nah." <laughs> uh, been there, done that. Been, been there, there yeah, that. yeah. We both been there, done that. I gave Ooh. the kids my testimony um, that uh, I was a prop forty eight. My grades. Uh, Hi. I don't know if they have that. What do they call that? It's not having a gray shirt anymore. That's uh, huh. um, I don't know what they call it, but it's. I don't even know if they do. They still have. They have it, but it's one of them shirt. One of them shirt colors. <laughs> Thank God they had it for 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 poor souls like us. Oh yeah, I wouldn't have made it. I wouldn't have made it. Um, but I went JUCO, and I didn't. I didn't know anything about JUCO back then. But this guy, uh, the audience, he's being modest. This guy is. Uh, Liberty's all-time sack leader. Uh, as of not anymore, ago, I think they just, I think they just broke his record. Um, 18, 17 years later, um, I showed him the moves. I just couldn't perfect them the way he. Could. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you have that one. Because <laughs> his, I used to, I used to always not understand. I'm like. Damn, he got him with that swim move again. I was like, I can't do that shit the way he do it. I just can't do it the way. Because you used to get that swim move where you used to get him. You ain't even had to bait him. You used to get him straight off the jump. That's man, Gil. man. That's Gil. Um, yeah. Yeah. For the most part. Yeah. That's that's just that's just in the get off. I don't know. Like, I don't know what kids. I don't Gil know. What, Diddy. Huh? 
Jennings. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shout out, shout out to Princeton Jennings, man. Shout man, out to Princeton Jennings. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, man, it was just that's one of the first things that I learned was just it was all about get off. After that, you know, when you become a so as, as being a short guy, you got to be technique sound, not unless you just, you know, brutally strong, which I wasn't. I mean, I was strong decently, um, but upper body he strength was 700 pounds. The audience, he squatted 700 pounds. He's being modest. 705 He's being to, be, to be to be uh, honest. Um, but yeah, upper body. Um, I was just decent. Um, but other than that, man, it was just it was technique, 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 technique. technique. Yeah, well, and Matt, just, Mason. Matt Mason said technique. He did. He did have technique. <laughs> he did. Man, shout out to Matt Mays, man. That's my shout guy. Shout out to Matt Mays. Yeah, shout out to Matt Mays, my I guy. I called you Matt Mays. You ain't called me back. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, that's I'm gonna say this too. So a lot of a lot of my material is gonna be coming from guys uh, they either play with at Liberty or um, it's gonna be it's gonna be Liberty Strong on this uh, network. Um, that's what's up. Me yeah, too. but it, we I'll, have share, a lot I'll of, share. I'll give you. Uh, I'll get you uh, Sam's number. Uh, Sam Gatto, he'll be a good interview. Um, oh yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. Yeah, Sam, definitely. Uh, and Barella, Barella killing it in, in, in uh, commercial real estate. So, um, you be well, we, 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 I mean, um, we're talent rich, man. A lot of, a lot of people would not know that. Um, we have a lot of awesome coaches, um, who are, who are coaching some, some of the most talented guys in the nation. Um, we have some, some college coaches too, who either worked at Liberty at Liberty or uh, graduated from Liberty. Um, so uh, a lot of the uh, material, a lot of the uh, content, um, is going to be from guys from Liberty. So. Uh, we can do that because yeah, I went to Liberty. <laughs> yeah, we went to Liberty. Hey, yeah. one question, man, before we get off here. Do you ever remember Tyler Biggins squatting 855 pounds? No, no, sir. I don't. I not, don't to say he didn't, not to say he didn't do it. <laughs> I, I don't I, think, I, I, I don't think we're in the weight room with I, I, I did not witness that. I did not witness it. <laughs> I don't think we were in the weight room uh, with, uh, with Coach uh, Dave Williams when he did it. I mean, um, Biggins, I'm not saying you didn't do it. I'm not saying you didn't do it. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not discrediting you at all about that. Um, but I know Say, Dave well, Williams. Biggins, I'm on the other side of that because I'm saying you didn't do it. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. I'm kidding you, Biggins. I'm kidding you, man. I talk to me and Biggs talk every day. He's a part of my company. He's, he's shout an out, investor. Shout out Tyler Biggins. Um, shout out Biggs, man. He's actually doing really good things, man. That's one of the things that I can say that all my friends and teammates are doing great things. Um, Seth Riker, shout out to Seth Riker. Uh, oh, yeah, you're holding it down work. in uh, Pennsylvania. Yeah, doing amazing work in the uh, urban urban community and in uh, Africa. Uh, so, yeah, kid had a great heart. I, I never forget the time when he first came in, me and you looked at each other and was like, Ray Sharp better step it up. <laughs> Crazy legs, Ray Bark. <laughs> hey. Yeah, they, like, got, they got they got coaching some um that guy is coaching uh Rashad, Rashad oh yeah Barkley. that shout out to Rayshard Barkley yeah he's five coaching some dogs down there in North Carolina too yeah five time state champion yeah we gotta talk about that Ray we gotta talk about that yeah yeah you gotta get Ray on here Ray uh Ray Ray and them producing dogs Ray and them got kids coming out of there left and right and they they are actually similar they're a little bit bigger in town than us. But they right. have that similar type story. They're not one of the biggest schools in Canapolis? North Carolina, but they're one of the most dominant programs in North Carolina. And Ray Shard is the uh, he's not D-line. he's the D line coach, and he might be the D coordinator. Oh wow, yeah, Ray Shard, get you up here, man. They won it again this year. They didn't want it like five out of the last six years. Yeah, we gotta get Ray up here so we can talk about it. Talk about it, yes, sir. But anyway, man, I just want to get you on. Um, we're gonna make this a regular thing. Um, especially when we start heading to the season, uh, giving us some updates yeah. about Biggs and some other guys that you come in contact with. Um, yeah. Put them on I the think map. we got a major, ma I think we have a, a major offer about to come through for a young Biggs kid pretty soon. Um, so st I'll stay tuned for that and I'll keep you posted. I want, I want the exclusive. You know, I want the exclusive. So as soon as, as soon as you find out, let me know immediately. We can, we can jump on immediately. Yeah. Yeah. We can do it. We go live. Cool. All right, my man. God bless you. Love you to death, my All man. Right. You have a good rest of your day. All right, you too. Take care. Peace.